And so crimson clover I really like. You can sow it really thickly on well-drained soil, so it won't work in the wetter as well in the wetter areas of the farm, but it will work in better drained areas of the farm. And so between late March and early October, so it has a wide range of when it will germinate. So we could be sowing some now that we could actually uh, cut down or sheet mulch over even before any kind of winter crop goes in, or even before May, you know, even if it just gets short and we never let it flower. Um, it actually will put more nitrogen in the soil if you cut it before it flowers, but it won't put as much organic material into the soil. So I like to sheet mulch, and I suggest that most home gardeners sheet mulch. It might be difficult uh, to do over a large scale. Uh, so sheet mulch or somehow uh, crush it. Some farm equipment just rolls it and kills it that way so that it doesn't disturb the soil. But um, the roller just kind of crushes the plant itself so it'll start to deteriorate. Um, so it's good to do it before it sets seed. Um, but I have rejuvenated really poor areas of my yard with just growing crimson clover and letting it reseed. So a few years in a row, just kind of letting it reseed, letting it reseed, it comes up again the next year, the seeds kind of persist and comes up again, comes up again. And over time, now that area that wouldn't grow anything now actually grows things. So plants take about 10 days to fully break down, which is really not a whole lot. So once you cut it, you know, you can plant in it, you know, a good 10 days later. Crimson clover adds nitrogen because it's a leguminous plant, so it has those nitrogen fixing modules that it uh, will uh, house the nitrogen fixing bacteria and feed it. So if you sow the clover in July and then cut and sheet mulch it in early September, you can plant your, uh, let's say if you already have transplants for your overwintering broccoli, overwintering cauliflower, your little spinach plants that you want to overwinter, anything you want to overwinter, uh, you can still plant it in early September. So you could plant it that late and still get a winter crop in. So it's a really useful cover crop and it's really pretty. Buckwheat is another cover crop and it can be uh, sown in the vegetable garden mid-season bare spots in between your plants even, uh, in between tomato plants. You know, why have bare soil? You can have a little bit of buckwheat. The nice thing about buckwheat is it attracts pollinators and so that's a really good thing about it. Buckwheat helps uh, contribute phosphorus and calcium to the soil and it helps make it more accessible to the crops that follow it. Yeah? Can you, um, would you take like a little harvest of the buckwheat too for your own? Um, you could. Yeah. yeah, 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 you could. Um. And so putting it between the tomatoes, so the tomatoes really love the calcium. It's tomatoes really there. love the calcium and they love phosphorus. Phosphorus creates strong roots. And what the alfalfa does, or the buckwheat does, is it actually pulls that stuff up from deeper in the soil and makes yeah. it more available for the plants. Usually with um, most cover crops, so you, you try to, to turn it into the soil before it goes to flower, just before it goes to When you just see an indication that it's flowering, that's when you turn it in and get the most benefit from it. Well, that's especially true from leguminous crops, but right. for things that you're just at, that aren't adding nitrogen to the soil, you're just looking for organic matter. So um, even if it flowers, it's okay. So this will actually persist in slightly wetter soils. You want to seed it and keep it moist. And then buckwheat can be sown through late summer, but the frost will kill the plants. But that's okay too. It's okay to have plants that are growing in your field and then the frost kills them and they turn into mulch. It's better than hauling straw bales and hauling leaves and hauling stuff for mulch when you can grow your own mulch and just have the frost kill it off and have it cover the soil. So again, I advocate sheet mulching over it if you possibly can. And, um, but if you do that, you need to let it decompose for at least two weeks before seeding 
uh, your fall crops or your garlic. Some people do this before their garlic. Mm -hmm. White clover. White clover I seed all over my yard. I just keep seeding white clover. And I plant it around my blueberry bushes as a, as a, a living mulch, as a sort of a, a ground cover. Uh, every once in a while it invades my veggie beds and I have to tear it back and compost it, but uh, generally uh, it's still easier than getting rid of a lot of weeds. It actually can, it seems to compete semi-successfully with even buttercups. So it's tough enough that it'll do that. Of course it's got the little flowers uh, that the bees really love. Another thing I found out about clover is that since I started growing a lot of clover in my yard, the rabbits that invade my yard every once in a while actually prefer eating clover than eating my plants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they fill themselves up on the clover and I see bunnies in my yard all the time, mm -hmm. but they never, uh, they never seem to eat my plants anymore. They just eat the clover. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, it can be used as a regular cover crop. You can sheet mulch over it. It deteriorates in two weeks. You can sow clover. Oh, we've sown it any time of the year, but you can sow it, sow it in July, and then plant transplants of broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, or cauliflower right into the cover crop. So you can leave that clover cover crop all through the winter and just dig holes in it and plant your little transplants. And it'll keep your soil from washing away, like it does in that other picture. Hairy Dutch also adds um, houses, nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Um, it's a legume, so it can be seeded in the spring from March into April. Um, you can seed it again in August. And the nice thing about this is it's somewhat shade tolerant. So you can um, plant it in even a shady area of your farm. And then what you can do is mow it and gather it and use it for mulch before, you know, before it sets seed. So again, you can grow your own mulch. You don't have to haul mulch in. Yeah. Um, in this little thing here, I was just looking for the cover crops, and it says with buckwheat um, that it can um, attract the flea beetle, and you shouldn't put it down before brassicas. See, oh. that's something that I didn't know. So for buckwheat, but no buckwheat for brassicas. Not before the brassicas. So is it, is it in the brassicas family? Weird. Well, but no, we, but flea no, beetles it will eat. The flea beetles will oh, oh. eat a bunch of different things, okay, so not just. Flea beetles. Okay. And flea beetles that right. make it up. Yeah, just attracts it. Plants. It's a bad beetle. Yeah, flea beetles create little holes in plants, like, but millions of them. So it was saying. Oh, that's a one. Is Brassica's cousin of the flea beetle, or not cousin? The crop rotation? Um, it can be, it says, but it's worse on the cabbages. Phosphate and potassium while shading out some of the weeds okay. attracts flea beetles and shouldn't precede brassicas. Mm. That's a little confusing because I know the mustard is a brassica, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to put it in the same rotation because it will cause problems. At the same rotation as a brassica. Yeah. Yeah. Too many so that's why I'm saying you made that statement. I think it's is buckwheat a bracket brassica. Oh no. Oh. But flea beetles still like it. It's just like that. I think that's what they mean. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's what it sounds like to me. I didn't right. know that, so that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. There's some some um, cover crops like uh, fall rye. Oh, can be. I didn't even talk about fall rye because I hate it so much. Yeah, because oh, really? it's. Well, <laughs> I was thinking, oh, I could make some bread. <laughs> well, because it's invasive. It's like, uh, it's hard to get rid of once okay. you put it in the field. It's yeah. like, <laughs> you got it forever. You got it forever, and unless you till. Yeah, you got to till. Till yeah. over and over and yeah. over again until oh. you've destroyed the structure of your soil. Yeah. You, you can't get rid of it. The other <laughs> thing about rye cover crop is that. 
it actually, how, why people like it, okay, and the good thing about it is it excretes things from its roots that prevents seed germination. And so if a weed seed falls on a cover crop rye area, when it starts to germinate, the rye will kill it. So the area doesn't get any weeds. The trouble is, it will not distinguish between uh, a lettuce seed and a weed seed. So you have to till it, and then you have to leave it six weeks before you plant in it. And by six weeks, chances are more has come up because it, it spreads by rhizomes as well as by seed. And I mean, the stuff, I couldn't believe it. I was house sitting a place actually in Port Alberni here, and uh, the woman had cover crop terrarium with rye, and she says, okay, end of May, you know, I was exchanging garden work. She was staying with her grandkids in California or something, and I was exchanging just taking care of her garden for having a place to live here, because I was teaching a lot here at the time. And uh, so it says, oh, just dig the rye in and plant the tomato plants. Well, I get out there and try to like dig this stuff, and it was like he needed a pickaxe to get through the roots, for one. And you know, I kept turning it over, and it kept, you know, it just wouldn't decompose, and it was just a nightmare. The roots go forever, and they're very tough and strong roots, and that's it. If you leave a little piece of it, it comes back. So. Yeah, so that's why I didn't even mention ryegrass because I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. It's, it sounds good. Well, that's what they sell practice, it's at really shark hair right here for cover crops. They got nothing else. Full rye. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oats are another one I didn't mention I uh, in depth, but you can sow oats. You know, it's good to sow oats kind of in August, September, <laughs> and then, again, they'll be frost killed and... So there are good cover crops. Even if you just leave the weeds over the winter and then pull them out before you want to plant, it's better than not having anything at all over your soil.